yeah, I don't know. It's whatever. All right, so I'm streaming now. I'm gonna work on Lore Pub some more, of course. All right, what else am I gonna do? <coughs> okay. Get that ripple up. All right, so one quick thing I wanna do here is I want to, so I've got, well, I last worked on the address form. It seems to work fine, you know, you can update the address and it, it works fine. But what I wanna do is, so I don't think it'll happen that often, but it's annoying even if it doesn't. If somebody has a long invoice here, because this is the actual cart. When we go to check out, in my head, this is just like an invoice that says what they're buying, right? So if this list gets long, it's gonna shove this address form down even further. And every time you update the address, it's gonna reload this page after it's done. But the problem is it goes back to the top. It doesn't stay at the address form like I would like it to. So I need to add the little, um, the little like, uh, some kind of nav link on the uh, on the markup and then make it so that the redirect is like check out Octothorpe address something like that so for starters um, taking a quick look yeah we don't have an ID or anything on this so that's initially not gonna work. I'm trying to remember. Um, if I do, oh, but if I try to go to the thing, it's gonna reload the markup. Ah, no, that works. No, it doesn't. It just reloaded. Okay. So I just need to change the markup. So uh, store view. It's gonna be checkout view. And this is the address checkout. So yeah, the ID is gonna be address. And we'll go ahead and add one for invoice. And let that reload real quick. Cool. All right, so if I go up, go to that. Nope, didn't work. All right. Uh, it has the ID address. Okay, I must have forgotten how these work. Um, let me see here. Haskellstack.org. Yes. Okay, so that one works. How do these little anchor things work? That's an ID. Right? That's all it's doing? Could it be that I need the actual anchor? Is that it? Uh, what are these called? Um, HTML5 hash anchor hash a name foo or ID. Any tag with an ID. Is that not what I did? No, but it didn't say I needed to do that. It said a div ID equals foo would work. And that's what I did here. ID equals address. That's weird. It doesn't actually, maybe the problem is that Chrome's being smart and it's just remembering my page location when I refresh this or go to it. Let me try it, Firefox, see if it behaves differently. All right, so log in. Excuse me, sorry. 
All right, so um, this actually reminds me, I need to make the redirect remember more than just the path. It needs to remember the query string and the hash. Okay, so if I go to checkout address, yeah. Yeah, it, it actually works fine. It's just that Chrome's being a smart ass. Yeah, it's just Chrome. All right. So that works fine. So the real problem now is if I do an update here, it's just going to go to checkout, not checkout hash address. Right? So let's think about this. Um. address and we need to redirect to check out if it succeeds I should change these to proper exceptions but whatever all right let's see here I can never remember the proper way, or at least I've never really been all that certain, the proper way of doing a redirect, but with some extra stuff kind of tacked on. Do you know what I mean? Well, you see how it's like redirect and then the checkout data constructor? Um, so the problem is I want to, what I, you know, in an ideal world, I would be able to just do like that. Right, but that's that's not gonna type check. Yeah, could not deduce semi group route app. Well, maybe it should have one, except it's not actually gonna work because then you would have to be able to lift this into the route app type, and that's not gonna. That's not kosher. So I think what I have to do is I have to pre-render this into the route and then append that. Um, Get ren no get URL render URL render check out URL let equals URL render check out URL address and that works fine all right ah, excuse me all right I just want something a little bit safer you know all right so if I do that ah it worked see I scroll up change it again bing all right cool I'm happy now. All right. Um, also, it's potentially arguable that the uh, that the purchase should go above the address, but I'm not going to change it for now. Okay. So that problem is now solved. All right, so the next issue is, which I literally just made up because I didn't think of it until just now, your old redirect should include query strings and hash components, not just the path. So was that at, yeah, it's here. So base URI, Lordy.
get current route, okay. And then redirect. Yikes. Okay, so going back to network URI, we want query and fragment. Path query fragment. Your eye fragment, your eye and pack query fragments. Okay. So what this should fix is if I try to go directly to uh, if I try to go directly to checkout address, it should send me to checkout hash address. And in fact, I'll just add like query equals test like that. All right. So if I log out, whoops, didn't mean to drag it. When I go directly there, it should remember that and use that. It did not. Dang. All right. All right, what I do wrong? So it saves it in the redirect URI. Right. Uh, it looks like it drops the query string somehow. Maybe something in how get current route works. No, that just comes out of nowhere. Source handler. Uh, get current route info. Get current route. Yeah, so I think the problem here is I'm using get current route. That's at least part of the problem. Um, ugh. all right. I'm also going to need to, yeah, mm, yes, annoying. All right. Hmm. Let's add a little bit of logging here. Log, I said log, warn, log, warn. Yeah, it's super useful types there, guys. Log, warn, t show. Actually, I don't think I need to T show it, so we'll just do target. Like that. Reload. Yes, very good. All right. Uh, go ahead and log in. Get the query equals test address. Log out. And I'll look at the log. <laughs> Where 
impressive lock. <sighs> we'll do it that way. Target was HP localhost 3000 checkout. Yikes. Yeah, get current round does not include the the entire thingy. Um that's kind of weird. <sighs> so is there a counterpart that includes that just gets me the entire Thing. URL rendering function with query string parameters, that's good. That's useful. I need the entire URL though. current route works. Get route to master. No, that's a promotion. This is old. Nothing wrong with it necessarily, but it's old. Family render routes URL, get URL render. Yeah, I know. The problem is the get current route drops the damn. Maybe if I just get the request object. Doesn't have a show instance. Yeah, I kind of have a feeling. Ugh. All right. Yes. So, quest. Why is Google giving me these ancient docs? All right. Info. Yes. So, request. Um. Get params, cookies, WAI request, lings, token session accept, oh. path info, query string, Jesus Christ, I just want the, the raw URL. WI request has a uh, a show instance. So what if I do that? Don't make me reconstruct the URL from its pieces. Come on. Um, WI request. Is there a URL grabbing thing for this? Guess the application route based on the given request. Close. Not quite. I need the whole thing. All I want. Hmm. Okay. 
Math to get, path info checkout, query string. I don't care about the headers or the cookie. Path info, query string, body. Where's the hash? That's weird. Wow. WI request doesn't even have the hash. That's inconvenient. Oh, you said request would be in you so core, presumably. Nope, that's a WAI. Maybe it isn't. Uh, no, it's gotta be. What the? Web soon. Uh, search this organization. So quest. Okay, maybe maybe that's just not a thing. Where, where's your sod request coming from? You saw core types. Um oh nuts, not repositories, code. There. Alright. Request, internal request, run types. Okay, there we go. So request, response, WI, WI app, plain. Huh. That is so strange. You said request get URL and determine the root of the application for constructing URLs. Is it? It's just going to make me manually reconstitute it. It's also not clear to me it stores the hash. It must. It doesn't align it. People would have noticed that by now. Hmm. Hmm. Let me bring that question up. Yep, yeah, Ethan Clark says WI splits it. I think it keeps the hash in the raw string. All right, yeah, I definitely noticed WI splitting it. Um, the problem is, so I thought WI kept it in the raw string somewhere, but you'll notice I can't search for address on this error page. The hash address part, um, the, uh, what do they call it? Hold on. The uh, fragment, yeah, the URL fragment seems to not appear in the WI request. It's really weird. And I'm pretty certain the show for WAI includes everything, but I'll double check. Also, if there's a raw string here somewhere, that's what I want. Is that raw path info? Is that what you mean? No, that's just the path. 
Yeah, the raw path info is just the path info. The raw query string is just the query string. I don't know where the fragment went in here. Maybe it's in the raw request body? No, that's the request body. Parsed query string information. It's just a list of tuple, byte string, maybe byte string. I don't know where the the fragment would be in this. They must be storing it somewhere, right? But I can't find it. I mean, like I said, if I search for slash checkout, it finds that part of the path. If I search for test, it finds it in the query string. Query string. If I search for address, though, nowhere. Pretty weird. WI URL fragments. What's going on here? Static path fragments. You're all captures. That's servant. Um, looks like this mentions fragment. Oh, they do have a nice way to include fragments on URLs. F. It's right there. Damn it. All right. Well, let's go fix that real quick. All right, um, that was post, what? All right, there we go. Uh, hold on. Where was I doing that? Is it in checkout? I think it might have been in checkout. Yeah, okay. So what I do is I do checkout R, and then this little combinator dude. And then address, and then we'll specify that that's a text value so it doesn't say it's ambiguous. All right, that's good, that's good. That's one problem solved. And then I think I can fix the query string code and auth based on, no, nope. maybe. No, I think I can. Okay, so instead of rendering target, uh, oh no, I do need to do that partly because I need to render target and escape it, but I can clean up the way I do the base URI. That's what I can do. All right, so the example here is like that. So we redirect to uh, login R tuple list redirect URI escape string target. And that's much nicer. Okay, good, good, good. good. All right, so I don't need that or that. I don't need final. I can get rid of that. All right, cool. So that at least cleaned up some stuff. Um, it looks like this is the only example with fragments, though. And it's just appending them on there. Hmm. Okay, um, give me just one moment because I'm going to ask Michael what I'm doing wrong.
Okay. Yeah. So, um, all right. So the URL fragment is purely client side. Um, only the browser knows about that. It never gets sent to the server. That's why the WI request and the SOAD request don't have a place to put it. So, uh, I could try to do something client side. I'm not going to though. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. So, what I'm going to do is. I had completely forgotten how fragments work. All right. So, walk in. Hey, wait a second. Log out. Um, Localhost 3000. Check out query test address. There we go. All right, redirect localhost check out address. Ooh, yeah, that's not the right thing. All right, I broke something. Something's not respecting the redirect URI. Um. I'm guessing it's not parsing correctly or something. That's weird though. So the redirect URI contains checkout and address, but I'm guessing the browser is just tacking that on there. So, yeah, that's weird. What does that look like in the form? Hmm, yeah, let's just ch check out. But then why doesn't it redirect it to check out? Okay, post login. Um, frame from maybe default redirect. Okay, so we're going to error show maybe redirect. Let's see what that looks like. I'm guessing some parse step is failing or something. Uh, no instance for show handler T. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Okay. Um, hmm. Kind of want to try to figure out which step. Waste <sighs> redirect target. Hmm. Yes. Let dio print redirect target. Redirect your eye. It's just going to be redundant in that case, but it's fine. I'm just going to start unconditionally printing things here. New target. All right. Back out the fragment part here in a moment. All right, so log in and let's have a look at what's going on here. Um, it got two prints in, so it's the parse URI that's failing. 
Not that it's going to tell me why. Okay. What happens if I do that without the fragment? Hmm. What happens if I do it without the query string? Hmm. That's bad. That looks fine. Oh, for the love of Did I remove an unescape string or something? Is it getting double escaped? Is that maybe what's wrong? Maybe it is getting double escaped. Because that doesn't look quite right. On the other hand, the escape string output was fine. Just want the URL here, bud. All right, escape. URI escape string. Ugh. All right, uh, escape. Source handler. Uh, uh, where's the, uh, Escape string. Here I is okay. Let's escape your I string. Nope, that's a single escape. And that's doubled up. And what's getting printed is not the doubled up version. What in tarnation? started working on what I thought was an innocuous change and suddenly I broke what it did in last session. Uh, 30252. Uh, nope, that is double escaped. What's in the URL? All right. Uh, remove the escape string. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. We can just do that. And where's requests? I don't think I actually need that. Lift, lift, I have print, die, die, die. Don't need you. Okay. Localhost, check out, log in. Yeah. Just double escaped. The sode thing does the save thing by default already. 
Oh, Lordy. It's all nicer and safer now. I'm glad I did that. All right. Localhost. Just out of curiosity, let's see if this gets carried across. Nope. For the initial one, it does, but not after the post. Hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Fair enough. Nothing I can do. Dun, 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 dun. URL rejection include. Nope. Both of those things get dropped. Target is just pack path, and we're gonna get rid of query and fragment, and that'll be fine. And I don't actually need that binding for redirect shadows the existing binding. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, save again. Work on user order history. Could work on checkout, coupons, address validation and confirmation. Uh, Lexi, what do you think? Anything in particular you want to see? think about worn on purchases of ebooks already owned. Um Yeah, I think it's just an extra database query and an optional little bit of HTML. Yeah, I think I would. The other reason I don't want to do this yet is I think I want to have order history implemented so I can just link to the previous order so that they can see where the stuff is. Um, I could do it beforehand, but that's just my preference. It's also not as important as uh, checkout. Um, the problem with doing checkout is the checkout's super tedious because I'm just going to be fighting like the Stripe JS and trying to figure out how that stuff works. Yeah, no, that's exactly it. I, I got to just dig in and do it. All right, so... Um, check out, yeah, okay. Store view, that's the checkout view. All right, so where is that Stripe stuff? Because I had some Stripe stuff 
already, and I actually need to uh, um, there we go. Now I've got the Stripe keys in place. I'm gonna open up Stripe on a different monitor. Dashboard, yes, take me to the take me to the stripe dashboard. Activate your account. Mm, don't really need to do that to just test. Okay. Um so yes. Upgrade available for my stripe API. Yeah, sure. Upgrading your API, yeah, okay, all right. Um, so Stripe API is up to date. Cool. Do I even have the Stripe dependency on this project yet? Yeah, I actually do. All right. Okay, um, I want to do this bare minimums at first. So in general, my understanding of the way Stripe works is so that you don't trigger PCI compliance. Um, the client sends the credentials to Stripe directly, not to your web server. And then Stripe validates the purchase based on whatever information you gave it embedded in the document and then the JavaScript basically does the transaction and then if it succeeds it's gonna go ahead and post to your server but not with the credit card credentials it's gonna do it with uh, a stripe token that's my understanding Try now. Uh, ensuring sensitive data never hits your servers. Yeah, that's pretty much the. Okay. Accept payments. Where's the complete commerce toolkit? On your website. For a more custom approach. Okay. What do you think is going to make people feel more comfortable, Lexi? Do you think? this default Stripe checkout thing, or is something more manual with elements like this, where it's more custom? Do you think that's gonna make more sense? You think so? I think, have you seen this before? The Stripe checkout like pop-up thing? Well, that's the thing, like if I use the Stripe checkout widget, then it's something people have seen before and are familiar with, and they're more likely to believe me that it's Stripe. <laughs> oh, I see. You do not actually Kona Kona Oa? Kona 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 World Wide Web? You will not actually charge to Stripe.js. You just create a token that you could do the charge with. All right, that's good. That makes more sense. And then Elements is the new one. You can also customize it. Yeah, Elements looks like the more customizable one. Um, the question is, is what what is going to make people feel more comfortable purchasing from this view? Like if they click Purchase here or Pay with Card or something like that, um, probably actually should say something like, uh, 
instead of purchase, maybe uh, pay with Stripe, probably. And then, so they click pay with Stripe. I think checkout's also, if you use Stripe checkout, don't they have the ability to pull the card you last used with Stripe or something through a browser data or something like that? Have you run into that before, Alexi? I think I've seen that before. Hmm. Yeah, remember me. Yeah, I think that's what that is. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Yeah, so you can just, yeah. All right. Yeah, I'll just use checkout. Okay, um, so I think that's what I already had. So where is um, Stripe checkout? Stripe PK. All right. Uh, Stripe PK. Cart view. So this isn't going to be in cart view anymore. Uh, check out view. Add script remote to widget, stripe pkjs. Okay, we're gonna move all that stuff down here. This is gonna become a do. Put that in there. And then, I think that's, that might be it. The only other thing is um, the actual markup or something. All right. Uh, okay. So view page source stripe. Uh, yeah, there it is. Um, so um, looks like it's uh, embedding checkout in your site. Okay. Data amount, name, description, image. Okay, check out Marketplace PNG. Locale auto. All right. Your server side code post. All right, then. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow down. Okay, don't, don't get away from me here. All right, so. So we're going to move that up. One, two. And this is, um, yeah, this is a new route, I think. So we've got checkout, checkout address. So, is that a checkout post? I think it is. I think it's just a post. So we will add uh, store uh, post cart. What's that do? Does it modify the cart? Yeah, I don't remember. All right. Um, I think it does. It does something. Hmm. Oh, that might be the th hmm. yeah I don't I don't know what postcard does all right post check out R save that um, the routes save that go to view save that and is this quite right might be data mount, I think that's nominated in sense. And then I need to grab the publishable key, but I'm gonna leave that alone for just a moment, just to see if this, whoa. All right. Hmm. 
Well, that works. Oh, because I'm manually inlining the publishable key. That's why that works. <coughs> hmm. All right, so we need to, where's the straight publishable key? Uh, hmm. Two widget stripe PKJS. Stripe PK. Hmm. Yeah, it's setting the publishable key. If it's setting it in JavaScript, do I need it in. Um, if I'm setting the publishable key in the JavaScript, do I actually need the thingy? Uh, stripe dot. Whoops. Set publishable key. Get. No. Get token. Nope. All right. <sighs> Let's just remove it and see if it works. Just by setting it from the JavaScript. Probably not a good idea. I don't like relying on JavaScript, but oh well. All right, did hmm. interesting. And then <laughs> okay. Uh, let me see here. More pub. can set that URL to an arbitrary thing. Uh, where's that image address? Copy link address. Bebop over here. This isn't proper, but this is just to see if it works. And I'm going to data key equals empty string, reload, pay with card. Yeah, that actually kind of works as is, to be honest. I mean, I could make it a make it have a background color, but that's actually pretty okay. So what I can do is change this to, um, where's the handler? Uh, it's a image logo dark, warp hub logo dark. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing. So then I just change it to do that, all right. And we're just gonna not worry about being clever here. All right, strike PK prime data key, strike PK prime save, and give that a shot. All right. <laughs> yeah, the, the checkout versus elements thing, honestly, that's the kind of thing you want to A-B test and see what actually converts better, because if a custom form makes people feel uncomfortable because they aren't certain it's actually going to go through Stripe, then you don't actually want to do that. You might as well just use the easier thing until you're certain something else is going to convert better. Okay, so that seems to work fine. Yep, that's fine. That's cool. All right, got the URL working. Um, Callen 4242, 42, 42, 42, and uh, 10, 30, 1, 2, 
444 not found. Oh, yeah, your server side code. <laughs> Oops. All right. <clears throat> Check out our post. And what we're going to do is go to check out our uh, post. Check out our. That is. Um, we actually want all that stuff. We want the stuff that gets the address in the cart. But what I want to do is I want to, let me think here. I just, I just want to print some stuff. Um, the form body, I think, is what I'm looking for. So, uh, yeah, pretty much that, actually, right there. All right. <clears throat> Alright, go back. Alright, pay with card. 42, 42, 42, 10, uh, 30, 1, 2, 3, pay, success. Ping. Uh, um, yeah, stripe token. There it is. So I just need to make a form for that now. Nifty. All right. So. Where have I been putting forms lately? Where have those been living? In view, presumably? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, that a stripe form. Uh, stripe token, stripe token type. Uh, add, where's the address form? Rip this off. All right. Dun, 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 dun. Wow, that render div stuff absolutely does not matter. Okay. Stripe form. I'm never going to pre fill out one of these, so that can go. Stripe form. Stripe form. Stripe, stripe token, stripe token type, um, stripe email, whoops, okay, I don't know if I'm gonna, oh man, what do I do? The Stripe email because if they're purchasing with me, I already have their email. So here's a question. What if they give Stripe a different email than they give me? Do I just ignore email entirely? What do I do there? Don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need that. Nothing. Drop. Nothing. Nothing. Stripe token. Stripe token type. Uh, stripe email. Okay. Should take a look at the Stripe library and see if it has a token type. Type. Uh, token, yeah. Talk to me about tokens. What's the deal? Bank account token, I don't think so. Card, wait, card token, token ID? Token ID of a token, token type, 
token card, token bank account. How do I even trigger the bank? What? What is it? Oh, right. It's right for There we go. How do I even pay with a bank account? Uh, hmm. Stripe pay with bank account. Is that if it remembers you and you have a bank account on file with them? Uh, supporting ACH payments with Stripe. Verifying. Receive debit payments directly from a customer's bank account instead of using credit or debit cards. ACH payments are provided with lower fees and card payments, those are additional. Payer vacation entries longer delays of payment and refunding. Uh, you'll need to collect your customer's name, account type, writing. I'm not doing that. No. I'd rather work on something that helps people across the pond. Okay, so we're just going to assume that's card. Yep. Alrighty then. Well, we've made progress. Um, next is going to be the, what time is it? 218. I haven't gotten any word back from the shop, so. All right, I am going to take a break, um, find out if my car has been fixed or not, and I will, in all likelihood, unless the car shop calls me in the next five, 10 minutes, I'm gonna start streaming again. So I will see everyone in about 10 or 15 minutes, all right? Thanks for hanging out with me. See y'all later.